Welcome back to another review. I've got the latest Nightcore charger, the UM4, in for testing and review. And this was sent in via Nightcore. No retail packaging on this. I just got the micro USB cable with this. So looking at the unit, very simple controls, just the two buttons and a micro USB port on the back. Plenty of ventilation on this particular one. There's your Nightcore logo that's embossed at the bottom. Nothing much else to see on the body other than the styling and design. And when you flip it over to the underside, you will see again we've got more ventilation slots. And if you look at the top here, this will cover all the batteries that it charges. So quite a lot. And that includes different lithium ion voltages and larger ones. This charger can work off the normal 5 volt or with a quick charge. So you'll be able to get quicker charging speeds with this if you're using the higher output quick charge compatible USB devices. The slot lengths are longer than any other charger that I've seen to date, 80 millimeters in total, and they also have a contact point so they'll be able to detect smaller cells and then set the charging speed by default appropriately for them. Quick comparison next to the Nightcore D4, very popular charger. You can see this is a bit longer and it's also a bit wider. The D4 has narrower slots as well and it also can't take the 20 and 21700 unprotected cells. They just don't fit in. So don't attempt to push them into the D4 because you could damage the wrap. And with the UM4, you see they slot in perfectly, but I also have a protected Rofus 21700 and very few chargers will accept this type of battery because it's even longer and there's no problems at all with the night core on this. You also have a fair bit of room so you can get the battery out quite easily. So that is a significant advantage longer term because these types of batteries are going to become more popular as time goes on, particularly the protected ones for torches. Just booting up the display now so you can see, you'll notice that the charging indicators are not in line with the slots. It's not a huge problem, you just get used to it and you do get the quick charge come up if you're using a compatible adapter with this, be it a car adapter, power bank or a USB wall charger. So once you've got a cell in, you have your basic display which shows you the voltage, milliamp hours and in total amount of time that it has charged into the cell. You also have the milliohms reading as well as the current charge status. So you can use this to see how much has been charged into the battery, how long it's taken. The internal resistance I will get onto in a while. The viewing angles are generally good from most sides, but the exception to that is if you look at it directly from behind, the display does disappear. Another point to note with the display is it auto dims very slightly after three minutes, not that much, maybe 20%. You can't turn the display off. There's no control to do that, so that something perhaps would have changed. Now I'm just putting a few cells in just to show you the display and the readings that you can get off of this. So you can just press the left hand button to cycle through the slots, depending on how many batteries you have put into the charger and you'll see on the display it will come up slot one, slot two, three, four, etc. And the right hand button will cycle through the readings. So you can manually do that or it will automatically every couple of seconds switch between the display. I put the charging speeds on the screen for you so you can see them. You have a selectable range between 300 and 1500 milliamps. You can also long press that button will take you to the highest output immediately so you don't have to cycle through them. The lithium ion voltage settings, you can change them with the three battery types. Remember that this is the termination setting. So it's by default with the normal 3.6 or 3.7 volt lithium ion. Now, if you do put a cell in the wrong way around, you'll see the error come up on the screen so you've got your reverse polarity protection as you would expect for any type of charger like this. With the smaller cells I found that sometimes they need to be moved around a little bit, the triple A's uh, to get contact with the charging points, that's just a small point that I noted. With most batteries I didn't see a problem but occasionally you might need to move some of the smaller ones around. Now the default charging speeds on this are ideal, half an amp for the smaller lithium ion cells and we have one amp for the bigger ones and you also have uh, half an amp for the AAs and triple A's. You can change them if you want. The internal resistance readings, once it's over 250 milliamps, it reads poor. But what I'm finding is that this is giving higher uh, milliamp readings than other chargers. 
I expect that to a point because of the internal resistance on the slots, but still they do seem higher than other ones like the X Star Dragon that I've tested. So there may be something that they need to tweak on that. So I wouldn't start throwing out batteries because they come up with poor on the display. This particular cell that I have comes in at around about 35 milliohms on the Dragon. So this reading is obviously a lot higher. Just take that into account. If you're going to be using this for testing cells, I would go off of the capacity that's charged into the battery and the charger does give you a fairly accurate indication of how much it's charged into a cell. Just make sure that you charge them when they are low. So if you see a big drop in capacity, that would be a better indicator rather than relying on the internal resistance test. Apart from that issue, I'm pretty happy with the overall performance of this. It's easy to use and the display is quite good. Here you'll see the full come up when it's completed charging. The display is not as good as the SC4 with a high resolution, but it's still quite decent. And the termination on the cells that I tested was decent. It's into the acceptable range, about 4.17 for the lithium ion, and the nickel metal hydride cells were charging without any complaints on that. So typically I've been getting 4.17 off of Nightcore chargers. They're usually a bit under the 4.2 most makers are. This is just a very quick look at the user guide, just covers the specs in detail as I couldn't show you the box information on this. Pretty simple charger to use. You'll probably find just with the default settings you'll be happy enough. Differences between the UM4 and the UMS4, this has 3 amps in total if you are using the quick charge uh, power output at 1.5 amps maximum whereas the S4 has 4 amps in total with the quick charge and you have a single slot of 3 amps so maybe if you're vaping or something like that would be of interest the default charging speeds are also higher on the other charger than this one I'd be happy with this one overall with the default charging speeds my overall thoughts I've listed up in the pros and cons is pretty good I would have liked if you could have turned off the LCD display perhaps a power bank function and the internal resistance measurements could be a bit more accurate but other than that it's actually quite a handy little charger and particularly with the protected 20 and 21 700 cells that offers a degree of flexibility that you're not going to get long term with some of the older chargers.